for all the bagels. Um, so just like we did with our uh, gentleman that came in, we ran this kind of special Facebook Live uh, informational Q&A session. We want to make sure that we gave everybody all the info up front about what to expect, how the process is going to look, when our Beagle Gals are going to be available for adoption. So we are going to walk through um, all the basic info for you. And then, of course, if you have questions at any time during this live, feel free to drop them in the comments. We will be watching them. We will answer your questions as they come up. Um, we can say right now that our first group of Beagle Girls are at surgery today, having their space surgeries done. The first batch of Beagle Girls will not be available for adoption until Thursday. This Thursday, which would be the nine what's thursday eight the eighth okay <laughs> thursday we we have a lot of beagles we haven't slept we live much. here we, we have, have, we have no right idea what day it is we live so <laughs> the shelter will open at 11 a.m um you will need to have a pre-approved adoption application with us in order to visit with these girls um, and we'll come down to uh, some more details on that, but we do want to say right off the bat that just because you have an approved application, just because you are here first thing on Thursday, does not necessarily mean that you will be the best possible fit for one of these girls. They do have some special needs, some special concerns, and so we are going to be uh, very, very discerning about the homes that they go to and we will get into a bunch of the reasons why. So again, first batch of about 10 girls will be available for adoption Thursday, but as we go through this week, the others will be going into surgery as we can fit them in. So I think that we expect that they will be available in groups Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week. Yeah. So different dogs will be up. You can stay tuned to our website humanefw.org on the adoptable dogs page will show you which dogs are going to be available on which date. Right now they all show available soon. Those available soons will go away when they're um, actually coming up next day. We are going to require that all members of the household be present uh, for the adoptions. That includes dogs. So if you have other dogs in the home, they will need to come with you at the time that you come to visit. We've got to make sure that not only the people in the home, but the dogs as well are going to be a good fit and that we're going to get along okay. Uh, we realize that it is a school day. We do realize that. So for these beagles, we are uh, doing, as we did with the boys, something a little special. Adults will need to be here in the morning to meet and greet. If you have school age children, we and, and everything else is looking okay, we will for a few hours hold the dog until the afternoon when your kids get out of school and are able to come down and do a second meet and greet. So just because you've got kids in school does not preclude you from adopting, we'll make those calls as they go. We will also tell you that some of these gals are pretty fearful. Um, there are quite a few of them, I think, that probably don't do great with small kids to begin with. They're a little scared. So that'll be on a case-by-case, -case, obvious kind of basis. Again, does not preclude you from adopting if you've got small kids. We just want to make sure that we find one of the pooches for you that's going to be the best fit. Um, Chris, if they have an, well, let's say this. How many applications do we have in already for these beagles? Oh, uh, we're close to 300. Okay, so we're close to 300 on, we've got 25 beagles, um, 27, I suppose if you include Mr. Desmond here, that's going to go up foster to adopt, um, and one of our other boys who is here going to be looking for a home. Um, that said, if you don't have an app in yet, what do they do? Um, they need to go our, to our website and get that application in. If you are unable to get on a website, then um, you're more than welcome to come on into the shelter. We have ones printed out and you can fill it out here. Um, they, uh, my front desk team is working really hard 
on getting those processed and getting those emails sent to everyone. Um, so just be patient, like we asked the first round, um, but they are working really hard to get those done. So um, check your emails, check your spam. Um, that will let you know if you are approved. Um, and like the first round, we're asking that to limit the calls um, because they are really working really hard up there. Our phone systems are actually down right now. So even if you wanted to call us at this moment, you can't. So if you have already submitted an application uh, or you have an approved application that you know of on file from us, they are good for six months. You do not need to submit a second application uh, for any reason if you know that you're approved. <coughs> if you never heard back about an application and so you're not sure whether you're approved or not, step one is check your junk and spam box in your email. Sometimes our replies go there. Step two is if you're not sure, you never heard anything, you've checked those and you don't know, send us a message on Facebook or Instagram. We'll check the status for you. If you have very specific questions that we're not answering here, you can always message us on our social media. Um, again, because the phone lines are down, uh, we're not going to, and because of the volume of calls we've been receiving on the Beagles, we can't screen all of those through the phone line. So social media is your best bet. Um, we do require um, proof of rabies for any existing animals in your home. So when you go to submit your application, you're going to want to provide proof of current rabies vaccine. Tags don't work because the tags only show the year, they don't show the date. So even a photo that you can upload of a receipt that shows, or an invoice from your vet's office that shows when they're due um, for the next one will be good for us on that. If you have any trouble with that, again, you can message us um, on social media. We'll try to help walk your way through it. Um, there are some veterinary practices. In a lot of cases, we're able to call to do a rabies check. Some veterinary practices, I know veterinary services out on Gump Road. Stellhorn. Stellhorn Veterinary. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe New Haven is now doing it. And New Haven Veterinary Hospital. If those are your primary vets where they have vaccines, in order for us to call your veterinarian and do a rabies check, you are going to have to call your vet ahead of time and pre-authorize them to release that information. Otherwise, they won't give it to us. So even if we try, we can't get to it. Please make sure that you know what your vet's policy is. Like I said, Stellhorn, New Haven, and veterinary services for sure require pre-authorization from the owner for us to check a rabies status. Um, what do they need to bring with them on the day of adoption besides all their people, all of their dogs? What do they need to bring? So their adoption fee is $100. Um, and that includes, you know, the usual microchip, spade, up to date on all their shots, um, one round of heartworm and flea preventative. Um, if you live in the city limits of Fort Wayne, you do have to purchase that pet registration license. It is required by the city. That is $5 annual, renewable every year, or 30 for a lifetime. We are requiring um, harnesses for these beagles. Um, it is not an option. You will have to purchase a harness. We do have them here. You will purchase them from us and we will fit one on for you. Those are $15. Um, and I believe we're also going to require the martingale. Yes. Which the we do sell here which too. Will attach to the harness. Mm -hmm. And those are $10. Those are lifetime guaranteed. So. And we've got our six foot leashes, which is what we're recommending as well. So all in. You're talking about a hundred dollar adoption fee. You're talking about, let me math in my head, 15, 25, $35 for leash collar harness. You're talking about anywhere from five to $30 for pet registration if you're in city limits. So you should be planning on this running just about 150 to $175 all in. That can be cash or card, yes. no checks accepted. Um, at the time of adoption. Your adoption fee in the event that something does not work out and God forbid that happens, we're going to be very, very cautious about who we send these guys home with. Your adoption fee is not refundable, okay? So in the event that it doesn't work, you return the animal that is not a refundable fee. That does help us to provide for all of the animals in our care. 
not just these guys and trust and believe we've got way more than $100 in each of these animals to begin with. Yes. Um, there is a question on here um, about the immunization. Even if their vet has already notified us, should they bring anything with them? No. If they're approved, that means that we already got that okay. verification that that is all done and they're good to go. Perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Medically, with the girls, what I am hearing from our veterinary staff is that the uh, medical concerns that we had were not much different than we had with the boys. In fact, the dental issues that they were having, they were on a softer kind of a kibble, so there was some tartar buildup, but that's even less than uh, what it seemed to be with most of the boys. Um, there was what they called some uh, pododermatitis which basically means some redness, some inflammation, some itchies kind of in between the paw pads from having been in kind of a wet, soggy kennel and constantly standing in kind of a grungy environment. That we expect to clear up as time goes on. It's just a matter of keeping those feet clean and dry ongoingly. Now again, these girls are all just going to be coming out of a spay surgery. Uh, some of these girls have had litters. We know that they've had litters because we can tell just from looking at them. Some of them have not had litters yet, but there is some aftercare and some uh, precautionary things that you're going to need to know about given that they have just been spayed. So I don't know which one of you ladies would like to discuss that. <coughs> um, aftercare, we do send you home. You will get a spay certificate that also shows the rabies vaccination on that. Usually if you flip that over, on the other side is the care. Um, the biggest thing, you're gonna have accidents, they are young. Cleaning them up is fine, submerging them completely in a bathtub full of water is not. Their incisions will be glued, so you're not gonna wanna leave them in a moist environment for long periods of time where there is a risk of that coming up. You're gonna wanna do daily checks on those incisions, just to make sure there will be a little swelling you know, post-operatively, but you're going to want to watch for any redness, swelling, heat to the wound, um, anything oozing, or if the glue, even without water, sometimes can um, break loose a little bit, you're going to want to get a hold of your vet or get a hold of us. If it's if it's a situation where you cannot get into your veterinarian, please call us or you to a vet clinic that is more convenient or more open to visitation. If not, we can arrange something with our clinics or with our vets here. We do have um, e-collars that we're going to send home with folks, potentially what we call sputer shirts, which are these really cute little tie-on gowns that covers the whole incision area if we see any of the girls messing with it. Uh, the boys heal from surgery pretty quickly. The girls need a little bit more time, so that's going to mean downtime for them. That's going to mean pottying on leash. That's going to mean not a lot of rough and tumble if you've got other dogs. That's going to mean no ripper and running through the house. They're going to need to stay quiet for a few days as they recover from that surgery. So as tempting as it can be to let them run, run. These girls are uh, a little skeetery anyway just because yeah. hi Desi because of their situation <coughs> but also with that surgery them getting spooked scared whatever is even higher potential for them to kind of tug on those incisions and we don't want to see anything bad happen so it's going to be keeping them quiet for the first few days that they're at home um, we've also had um, now that we've had some experience we're learning you're learning um, learning from other rescues and adopters that we've had um, we do want to make sure that you're aware of some of the behavioral things that we have seen with um, the beagles specifically um, and kind of run through some of those things that are behavioral concerns. Um, I think obviously we can say they're not terribly well socialized. The girls seem yeah. to be a little bit more, a little less fearful than the boys were. The boys, I think, had. Yeah, the girls, I think, are a little bit more open. Um, and also they're a little younger, so they were exposed to that environment for a shorter period of time. So I think that might make a difference in the girls too, but still we did play groups yesterday with two groups of the beagles. Um, outside noises, cars driving by, even quiet noises, they startle very easily. They do seem to settle in 
like most dogs do, but it may take a little bit more time. We usually tell people three days, three weeks, three months, three days for them to decompress. Three weeks they start settling into your routine and feeling at home. Um, three months, they're right where they're probably going to be. And you know, if you're going to see any weird behaviors, a lot of times it comes on then. That decompression time for these girls is going to be a bit longer. Um, you're going to want to just be observant of that, and like she said, post-operatively, because their surgery is more invasive, you're going to want to have some quiet time for them anyways. Um, taking them outside needs to be done on leash. We obviously have a very secure yard here. We take six or seven people out with us. I think we had seven yesterday with our groups of beagles. Um, if you're even out in your own yard, they need to have a leash on. They need to be dragging that six-foot leash or get a 30-foot lead. Don't get a false sense of security from having a fence because I have seen beagles go over tall fences. I have seen them go under in the tiniest spots underneath fences. I had I had one for 15 yes. years. Mine, I have a mine lot too. Of yep, mine too were fence, fence climbers. Fence, yep, yeah. mine too were fence, fence climbers. They didn't care how tall it was. They were going to find a way out. And so some of those instincts are still going to be there with beagles. You know, that, that drive to follow the scent is there. And a lot of times that can block out a lot of what's going on around them. Um, so you want to be very aware of what's going on when you're outside with them. You want to make sure that they're on leash, that you are with them. Um, don't take them out in public. Don't don't take them out, you know, to PetSmart or, or even the paw-friendly patios or anything. These guys really, really need some time to settle into their environment. I think the biggest thing with these guys is really going to be building trust and a relationship inside in your immediate environment until you've got a relationship with them their circle needs to stay pretty small yeah. um, because trying to push them harder and faster is only going to set them back further yeah. so be prepared to be patient be afraid uh, prepared for them to be afraid of things like doorways and ice cube makers and None clicks of, of your storm doors mm -hmm. there's they, sounds that they've not heard or experienced before and even here in our shelter where it's obviously a much better environment than the kennels that they were in before there are sounds and things that happen at home that you're just not going to get your tvs tvs right so these guys <laughs> these guys we're we're taken from a facility that was actually dead center in the rural area of that state so these guys are not accustomed to hearing cars and semis and horns honking and sirens and they've lived a pretty peaceful life other than their own voices um, while in that environment and we kind of touched on feeding a little bit earlier when we were talking they had um, common feeders so basically if you're a farm girl like me you would say it was a chicken feeder it's a big metal container that they can fill up it was probably about this deep one spot for everybody to feed so you get a lot of problems with you know the, the bigger dog gets the most feed so you need to be cautious about that not communal feeding your animals so communal um, feeding let's talk about that because yes. this is an issue that we've already had with the males and so we want to be crystal clear on this if you've got dogs at home very frequently it's dinner time everybody gets their bowls you put them down in the kitchen and everybody goes to their bowls and they eat what we are telling you crystal clearly hear us now believe us later do not co-feed these beagles. They have spent their lives having to fight for the resources that they have and not knowing if that feeder was gonna be full, not knowing if somebody was gonna to get to it ahead of them. Your best bet, seriously, find a bathroom, go to the crate, do something. Lights are wonderful. Let these guys eat on their own because what we're finding is that some of these adopters that we've had are building up a level of comfort kind of too quickly and there's some resource guarding behavior that could have been completely avoided would be completely avoided by simply putting them in a different space to feed yeah. right so please do not co-feed and because of their environment they didn't have a lot of disruption from humans so on top of that co-feeding there was nobody there to kind of separate them if they were having issues. They just pretty much lived working things out on their own. Yeah. So that's not something, we don't want them to have to fight for food in their new home. We want them to be able to comfortably eat. I have dogs that I've had for years. Two of them I still crate when they feed. The other one eats outside the crate, he's fine. 
So, and, and they're fine any other time with, when they're with each other. We just do not co-feed. One of my dogs did come in through the shelter, probably not enough time with her mom, um, which will be the same situation with these guys. They didn't have enough time with their parents, so they didn't learn all those lessons that she can teach them. So my largest dog eats by herself because she has a tendency to be a bit of a resource guarder. She fought her siblings for food. Yeah. Couple questions right now that we can um, just sort of address. How long can we anticipate the process to take for the adoption process on Thursday? Um, well, with all the things that we have learned from the first round, um, we're going to kind of go over some things in the next couple days with the animal care specialist, our go home team, um, just to take a little bit more time this round. Um, I, we all get it that we've had dogs in the past, but we really want to make sure that we are getting our knowledge across to the adopters and that they are understanding that these dogs are different. And so, you know, while I would love to say, you know, it could take a half an hour to 40 minutes, you know, be prepared, be patient. It could take, it could take up to a few hours. And if we have dog interactions, that's going to mm -hmm. take just that much, much longer. longer. Yeah. And yeah. if there are multiple dog interactions here, we ran into that the last time. Mm -hmm. We had multiple dog interactions. We only have so much space to do those. Some of those people had multiple dogs. So all those things can contribute to it taking just a mm -hmm. little bit more time. And we really want to take our time with these guys. Yes. So for the sake of the dogs and for these potential adopters, please just be patient with everybody on, mm -hmm. on Thursday. Um, one question we have on here are, are there certain species of dogs that are likely not good matches with beagles? They have a female Great Dane and a male Border Collie. I would say, I, this is what I tell people all the time, dogs are just like humans in that sense. They don't always get along with everybody. It's not so much about breed, it's about the dogs, how they get along socially. You know that you could come in with your Great Dane and your Border Collie and the Beagle and the Border Collie could get along great and the Great Dane's like no I don't want anything to do with this dog and we had some of those situations with our last round of adoptions we had an adopter come in with her Beagle so even same breed um, her Beagle was a little bit older wanted nothing to do with this new puppy and she was so great about that she said it's fine he's my baby I'm letting him choose so just just keep that in mind. Let your dogs decide who they want to be with. Yeah, for sure. And I will say too, I think the the majority of adopters that we have had, at least with the boys, have said that while the dog situation is going to be one of those things where it's going to be on a case by case, yes. these beagles, for the most part, do not seem to care about cats. I, like that's obviously going to be on a case by case mm -hmm. kind of a basis we can't guarantee it but those that have been in foster care those that have been adopted I think these guys have like never even seen a cat and so they're just like wow you're a really weird dog and they yeah. just sort of move <laughs> on for the most part so again we can't make promises about what that looks like but if you do have cats in the home we can say that the experience that we've had so far has been that these guys don't care so much about cats. They've grown up with dogs, and so dogs are more what they're interested in. Um, let's talk about um, potty training and what to expect. We've had lots of questions about, are they housebroken? Are they potty trained? <laughs> so they are all a year old or almost a year old. They have spent their entire life in a kennel on a grate going to the bathroom whenever and wherever they choose. I always tell people, even with a shelter dog, um, if they're in a shelter for any amount of time, you know, we're not at home. We're not letting these dogs out at 10.30 at night like I let my dogs out. You know, last call, these dogs are spending at least 10 to 12 hours alone in their kennels. These dogs have come for an environment where they've spent their entire life in a kennel. So I think it's gonna be a lot more difficult not that it's impossible, it's just going to take patience and time. We had an adopter come in the other day, he says, we really love our dog, but he is still having accidents and he's afraid to go outside. 
which is another issue. They've never touched grass. They've never touched anything but a grate with rubber on it. So they know not to create kennels. We have a gravel um, play yard, so they're getting accustomed to that. We have some artificial turf out there that they're running around on. So they're getting adapted to those things, but just be patient with them. Many trips out, lots of treats. Not the treat that you give them every time that they do something cute. This needs to be a high value treat, a special treat. Is it just cheese? It's just cheese then, fine. When you go to the bathroom, you get cheese. The couple that came in, their dog had had a couple accidents in the house. I said, listen, as weird as it sounds, pat it up with a paper towel, take that paper towel out to the yard. If they do the number two, pick it up, put it out in the yard. Take them to that spot. And when they're checking that out, and especially if they go to the bathroom, give them some treats. This is a great place to be. Taking them out 15, 10 to 15 minutes after they eat. Once you, when you pull them out of that crate post dinner, post breakfast, post whatever, let's go outside and hang out for a little while. You don't have to walk them around the yard. You don't have to do anything. Just sit out there with them. You know, if you've got a 30 foot lead, put them on a 30 foot lead and let them have a little time to explore. Eventually nature will take its course, so. Patience, like everything so far. Lots and lots of patience. One well, question on here is, when will we know which beagles will be available on Thursday? So we're going to, on our page right now, you see that they all say available soon, right? So what's going to happen is uh, when everybody comes back from surgery, it will be probably Wednesday night that we will make updates to that showing who's actually going to be available. So that available soon will go away and you'll see an actual profile picture of that dog. So the ones that are going to be available soon, not up yet, will still have that available soon picture. And then of course on Facebook, like we do on a very regular basis, we will post the next day's adoptables. So you'll see those pictures as well as we roll through these surgeries. Um, we're not going to say instantly who's going to be available. Some of them have a harder time than others with surgeries. Some of the, you know, there's oh, just like with anybody doing anything, there's varying things and we want to make sure that they're physically feeling up to being ready to go home. So the night before, we will update all of that information so that you can see who's available. So Wednesday night by about 8 o'clock, uh, you should see a Facebook post with those uh, pups that are going to be available on Thursday and you'll also see that on our website. The website does update in real time roughly within about an hour. So from the time that we make a change in our system, within about an hour that update is made to our actual website. So if you can see a dog's profile, they're here. If the profile goes away, it means they've been adopted. Um, that's a pretty typical thing. Um, the other thing that we super, I think, want to drive home, because this has been a thing, I don't know if anybody watching has seen some things floating around on uh, the Facebook universe. Um, these dogs are what we call high flight risk dogs, okay? Which means they spook easily, they scare easily, they don't have a lot of relationship with folks, they're in completely new environments, and anything that is scary is likely to make them bolt, lickety split, they are gone, right? And because they're not well socialized and they don't know their names yet, it's not like you're gonna go, come on Poochie, and they're gonna come right back to you. So we desperately want to drive home what having a high flight risk dog means. I'm gonna let Christy speak to that, but Please be aware that if your household, um, if the way that your home is physically set up is not conducive to having a high flight risk dog for the sake of these dogs, please keep that in mind as you consider whether you want to take one of these babies home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and those issues can come up with, you know, are you a high traffic house? If you're a high traffic house, you're going to have to be very cautious about people coming in and out the door you need to have that leash secured before you even think about opening that door. And if you have kids, that's an, it's another concern. I know I have um, nieces and nephews, and when my children were younger, running in and out of the house was just a thing. That is a thing you're gonna have to be really cautious with. Um, Des, who's been staying with Melissa, I don't know if you can see on the floor here, he's got some treats. 
If you think treating your dog or giving them high value treats is going to bring them back to you, it is not. Um, a frightened dog is not interested in food, water, or a lot of times you. They're, they're scared, they're wanting to hide. Um, comfort. Yeah, comfort. They're going to want to go under bushes and hide away from people. So being very cautious about your home, making sure those gates are secure, those fences are secure. Um, when my kids were younger, we had bear. Yeah, for any reason, this stays on. If he should ever break out of my house, this gives somebody four extra feet yes. of ways to get a hold of him. Because yes. trying to grab one of these guys is just going to terrorize them further. So, you know, they've asked you, are they leash trained? Not really, right? Yeah. They've never really walked on a leash. So even the sensation of having a leash and a collar on all the time and dragging that is really going to help. Now, after a couple of days, he got used to the feeling he does great now on a walk. He loves going on walks. He gets to use his nose, but we're always on leash, right? At no point in time have I ever felt safe not having him on a leash. Well, okay, I have a six-foot privacy fence with, like, locked down like the fort, but I'm in the backyard with him. I don't leave him in the backyard by himself. So... It is, you know, fireworks, um, any kind, he's, scared, noise, by, he's scared by the ice maker, yeah. right? Somebody opens or closes the door, something clicks loudly, he'll spook and run. And he doesn't know where he's running or what he's running to. All he wants to do is get away from things. So bear that Common noises for us are very uncommon for them. They Again, are, kennel environment, all they've ever heard is barking and hoses. If you're gonna And open. hoses have not been, a, that was another point too, hoses have not been a pleasant experience for these dogs. Yeah. Um, bathing, I wouldn't recommend it. I would, I would keep away from water for a little while. They do have dry shampoos, they do have dog wipes. Um, a lot of these dogs in the footage that I saw, their kennels were hosed and cleaned while they were still in them. And we're talking from little tiny puppies up to adults with, you know, four or five dogs in the kennel. So when you even open that crate door, let them walk out. Because again, even opening, the only interaction they had with people was somebody opening that door and hosing that crate out or taking them out for some medical procedure. You know, it's, yeah. it's a risk. It's a risk. So it, what you think is commonplace in your house is not at all commonplace to them. Yeah, it's absolutely not. I think letting them really have that freedom mm -hmm. to explore things. If and, and like with kids, don't tiptoe around no, because of them. You, correct. You know, yes, you're not going to go and want to blast your music and slam doors and do things like that. But they're going to they're going to need to hear those noises. I just wouldn't, you know, on the vacuum the first day you have them. Correct. Home. <laughs> and hear it on their own terms, right? So it needs to be safe for them to try new things, it also needs to be safe for them to get away from those things. So, you know, forcing them, oh, I desperately want you to cuddle up on the bed with me. Don't force it. It will come as they build a relationship, but forcing these dogs into situations where you want them to come in the house, so you're pulling on a leash, you you're better off. shutting them down. You're, you'll shut them down and it, and it backs them up more. So this is a, a, a labor of love and will take quite a bit of patience. The other thing that we cannot recommend more and more and more and enough is the use of uh, baby gates in your house to make barriers for things if there's areas where they're likely to go get high where they can hurt where they can you know do things or a way to kind of create a second barrier towards an exit to the house you can use baby gates don't First. open an outside door without somebody needs to be holding the leash before you open an outside door if you don't have baby gates. They even make really neat ones that are retractable yep. that actually clip yeah. onto your actual door and when you open it, it creates a net that cuts, you know, hits the door frame. It's a soft barrier that's just, you know, they're going to kind of bounce off at trampoline style a little bit. Yep. Um, but all those things are worthwhile investments for these guys helping them to learn the safe zones and what's okay and what's not. Um, Had a couple questions just about the adoption process. Um, one question was, um, or one group of questions was, can we put a deposit down? Um, once the dogs are on the website, can they adopt from the site or go to the shelter? Um, we do not. We do not allow uh, deposits before you meet a pet, and we require everyone to come in and meet the animal. 
Yeah, that's so just that's just an overall, mm -hmm. you know, shelter policy. So yeah, so this is not like where you're, uh, you know, in a lot of cases where you would be, uh, you know, from breeders, or, uh, you know, put the deposit down on your puppy. Yeah. We, there's no deposit. Um, we want to know absolutely that this is the best possible fit because deposit or no deposit makes us no difference. We want these dogs going to the right home the first time. So, well, and like I said, it's it's just a policy across correct. our board. So correct. Yeah, we want to make sure that no dog, we, every dog, yeah, is like that. So. so how about socializing with other family pets? In terms of the beagles, how do we introduce them to cats or dogs? So the dogs, they'll meet here, right? The dogs are going to have to come here for a dog-to-dog -dog interaction to begin with, and I think some of that, again, is letting them go on their own terms. But depending on how those interactions go here, Absolutely. our behavior staff will work with your family specifically, given what they saw in those interactions, to give you feedback, tips, what the best possible way for this to go in your home. And just when we adopt out just your average basic shelter dog, pretty pretty low key, pretty stable, done really great with behavior, all that, I'm still going to tell you when you take that dog home, be mindful that these guys might get a little tired of each other. You know, your dog hasn't shared a home with this dog. This dog has not shared a home with your dog. So um, go ahead and give them separation time when they need it. You know, if you think that the beagle is showing little signs of stress, panting, pacing, um, and we can talk to you about that further too when we do our go homes. Then give them a little time in their crate. Give them a Kong, give them a Chewy, let them hang out in the crate and take your other dog outside and you know spend a little individual time with them. It's just the whole thing is just being mindful of what you're seeing behavior wise with those animals. If you think they need a break, give them a break. Perfect. We're all about going slow with these guys. Yeah, and you're not going to want to be doing like a whole ton of socialization right out the instant gate to begin with because again, they're going to just come out of their space surgeries and not be feeling the absolute best um, to begin with. Um, what else are we missing? We do have uh, behaviorists on staff, we do have veterinarians on staff, and just like with any adoption that Humane Fort Wayne does or ever does, we want to be the first to know about problems that you may be having, about victories that you may have. If you need support from our staff veterinarians, from our adoption specialists, from our behavior specialists, we are 100% here for you. There is a really great nationwide in Vigo foster and adopter support group online that is exclusively for folks that have taken this dog. We'll be providing the link to that to any adopters as well because it's a great way to share experiences and feedback and things that have uh, triggered some of these pups across the board. If you're seeing some kind of weird behaviors, that's a thing. Um, this will uh, be the last batch that we have of these in in Beagle Beagles at this point because if you missed the news, the Humane Society of the United States uh, did declare mission accomplished. Uh, our 25 girls were on the, the last crew of 312 out of that facility, thank heavens, uh, last week. So they're all out and they're all looking for their homes all over the place if they're not in it already. So at this point, um, there won't be any more of the Invigo Beagles coming, thank goodness, thank for goodness. the moment. Um, what else? Which kind of touches on there's still work to be done. There's okay. still Absolutely. Kind of work to be done. Absolutely. And do stay tuned for that as well because we do have some things planned uh, in the coming months with our partners at HSUS to talk about what we as a community, what we as voters, what we as citizens of the human world can do to protect these animals better and how we carry this forward. We know this has had a ton of attention. We don't want to lose that momentum because uh, at any given moment there are something like 50,000 beagles, just beagles, uh, in the United States in mass breeding facilities, in these laboratories. So 
yeah, we cleared out one facility and we did work, but there is more to be done and we look forward to sharing with you what we've got kind of in the works on that. Um, and again, please, please, please understand that our goal with these beagles, as with any dog that we have ever taken in or cat we've ever taken in, is to make the best possible match. We want these to be forever homes. We don't want these pooches to get shuffled around or traumatized any further. So if our staff say to you, you know what, this is really not a good fit, we need you to be super understanding of that and know that our hearts and our goal is to make this a successful adoption for you and for the dog. And if it's not one of these guys, we know that there's somebody else out there for you and we love making the right match. But with 300 applications and 25 beagles, not everybody's gonna be a great match. Not everybody who could be a great match is gonna get one because of just the quantity, um, but bear with us on that. So that was leads to one question that a viewer had. Um, I suspect there will be more interested people than pups. How is that handled? So again, our adoptions are always, I suppose, we call it first come, first serve. We, have, we had 250 applications in on the first round of gent beagles, and we've had more coming in now, <coughs> even still. Again, the applications are good for six months, so yes, there is absolutely more interest than there is beagles. So, first come, first serve means that when the beagles become available for adoption and our shelter opens, the people that are here with pre-approved applications will have first chance to go through to meet, to see the dogs, and for our staff to then determine if that's a good fit. So there's no way for us to prioritize a list of 300 people and say, here's first pick, second pick, third pick, fourth pick. If you're pre-approved, you'll come in on the date that you're available um, to meet the dogs that we have available. Um, if you can't get down here on those dates, I, you know, we can't keep them our goal is to get them out of here as quickly as possible, so that's why we're trying to give people a couple of days notice now that the girls will be up for adoption Thursday, Friday, Saturday of this week. I expect that, that all 25 of them would be up by Saturday. There is potential if anybody has complications from surgery or something happens that there could be a few still left for next Tuesday. Um, since, I'm sorry, for Sun, well, Sun, you just as much or more. Um, we know these guys have been really, really high profile, um, but there are hundreds of thousands of animals and Absolutely. you know dozens even yeah. here in our shelter now that also need you. Yes. So please don't. Oh, you're hamming it up. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody want to foster yes. to adopt my baby son? Desmond. Desmond's yes. got some super. Yes. Desmond's got some super special requests of his people because Desmond was of his people's but um, Desmond can even Desmond's foster to adopt even yet today mm -hmm. so if you're interested in meeting nice Desmond you could come meet him now, now. today um, um, I have a question about uh, house cats um, if they have cats in their house do they need to bring them along with everybody oh, else no. <laughs> no, no, no. please do not bring your cats your cats will hate you now, question number two then would be how should they best socialize them or introduce them? So I think we have information to send home on that okay. also. Yeah. Um, again, not tossing them together. Um, even when we send cats home, we're like, you know, keep this cat in a small area first. It doesn't know where its litter box and food and things are. Same thing with, you know, introducing them. They can get a smell through a door or through the baby gate choose to interact or not choose to interact for cats that's a lot easier because they can go up and over that gate and move to the other end of the house okay. but don't force interaction do you know just let it give naturally them their time take and their course. space yes give them yep. time and space no they um, will and i think the majority of people that have taken these guys home and if some of the folks even that i've seen on the Invigo support group and i will tell you this guy being in household with seven cats and a pit bull for the last couple of weeks most of the beagles i don't think could care less yeah. about the cats. We haven't had any. So, you know, there's been no malfunction. So the cats kind of come up and sniff 
them and then they kind of say like wow you're a weird dog and then they sort of move on but it's I, you know kind of let them let them do it on their terms safely again that's another great reason to let them drag leash right in the event that something again, weird does transpire you have that extra four yeah. six you, whatever size leash you have you can step on that leash you've got it but i have think somebody requesting some additional clarification on um, like once they see a beagle that they're interested in, like their picture shows up on the website, when should they come? So if that beagle shows up as available, right? So right now they say available soon. When they're actually going to be available, then that available soon goes away, right? You will see them up there as like, here's my picture. So um, Penny Lane, for example, is one of the gals that's up there. The available soon will go away, you'll see the picture. That means that that dog is going to be available next day. Again, Wednesday night, we will post on Facebook profile pictures of all of the girls that are going to be available for Thursday. When the dog is up that you are interested in, you're going to want to show up at the shelter the next morning. We open at 11. <laughs> so you're going to want to be here that next day um, to see them. And how did that go last time, Chris? So when, when they come in, what can they expect um, Thursday morning when they pop in here? So um, provided the weather cooperates, we'll be set up outside. Um, you'll, you'll come to that table before you can even come to the in the building. You'll come to that table. Um, you will um, get a paper stating that you are pre-approved. Um, and then that will move you into, um, I mentioned side gate, so we're going to do that again. Mm -hmm. All right, Over to our side gate, um, and animal care specialists will come get you, and then they will take you back there and begin the process. Okay. Um, but you'll, you'll want to stop at that tent first just to make sure that you are. And it'll be very apparent right up front center of our, um, our front shelter. Center. Yep. <laughs> it's front and center. Front center. The only um, person that was first the last time was. Uh, a lady was looking to adopt a beagle and she said she was there the night before which yeah. was a and she riot. came up from Indy. Yeah. Even, so. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a question on uh, the microchip. Uh, will there be an Invigo microchip and our microchip or just ours? So they all have an Invigo microchip already, right? That's in their ears. The information on their Invigo microchip, that chip code, is on the paperwork that they will receive in their go-home folder. That information is there, and those uh, the Invigo support groups actually have links to where you can go. Is back it the those. microchip? Or are you talking the code? The tattoo. No. The tattoo. No. The tattoo is different. So they've all got tats in their left ear that has their ID, but they all have microchips from the Invigo facility. Gotcha. So that's. A but that won't be registered to anything. It's only the so microchip. Correct. That we put in. Correct. That will be registered. But yep. they'll have information for both chips. So okay. we do have the chip numbers is on their individual paperwork from the facility. So that information can get updated. They used a different uh, microchip company, I guess, than what we did, or a different provider. Um, and it's a little weird because they're in their ears. They got a chip in their ears. So you want to see it? Oh, good boy, Dazzy. Yeah, so they've got their tattoos in their ears over here, but that is not their chip number. This is a separate thing. You can see Dozen's tattoo and his big floppy ears, but there is a microchip in one of them ears. I guess so. But we do, and we also will maintain secondary status on the 24 Pet Watch chip that we put in for life. So it'll be registered to you as an adopter, but as with any of our animals, our shelter stays secondary so that in the event the dog is lost, picked up anywhere, and they can't find you, they will find us. Um, yes. Yeah, we want to make sure we get them back to safety and shelter until someone can get a hold of you. Yeah. So sure. let's talk about ongoing support then. What if it doesn't work out? What if we take one of these beagles home and it's just not a good fit? So as um, always, we ask, like Melissa mentioned, uh, giving us a call, seeing if there's anything we can help you with. We do have a lot of on-site behaviors, you know, people here that really can give you a lot of uh, great advice. If not, then we ask that you do make arrangements to return them to us. Um, you can't sell them, you can't anything like that. You cannot give them away without our knowledge. 
So if you choose to rehome them, we have to be a part of that. Um, and yeah, when they get when they go home, they always get the cards of um, like the kennel staff, um, the behaviors. They'll get their phone calls and how to contact them. And these guys do, uh, because of the high profile nature of the Beagle situation, there are some additional resources out there in terms of training and support that because of how big this whole thing got, we do have some additional resources for our Beagle adopters for that stuff as well, even above and beyond what we, what we always offer in-house. Sure. So we are your partners through the whole thing from the time you walk out the door with that animal until that animal takes its absolute last breath. They, they, they stay our kids forever, right? They're our fur babies forever. So we want to partner with you and we want to see it be successful. And that has sometimes meant our staff making after hours visits to people's homes to see what's going on or late night text sessions or you know whatever. We are as committed to these adoptions working out as you are to having a happy household full of fur babies. So, you know, never forget that we want to be your primary resource for Absolutely. these guys. Absolutely. And so just to let me also inject something there, um, if these beagles do happen to get away from you, please, please call us. Please let us know so that we can give you direction and we can help and we can, you know, be made aware that that you know has happened yeah we want to be your first call yes. whatever is going on behavior issue or like yay I went potty outside for the very first time or uh, my dog bolted the fence pictures of them get a picture of that right side of the body the left side of the body the front the back um, be mindful of that because if something does happen you want to be able to identify your dog from some of the other 50 beagles that may be running around. <laughs> you know, well, and fantastically, Petco Love Lost yes. is yes. another resource yes. that is groundbreaking in that it is a national resource that utilizes facial recognition for lost and found animals. Yeah. So if you have those great pictures, you can post this guy's lost, and if somebody posts this guy was found, It'll use facial recognition and marking recognition to try to match you back up, even across the country. So Petco Love Lost is a, a groundbreaking thing that is really still starting to get um, traction. But that's another great one. Desi, you're being such a good so boy. Uh, we had one handy. question on here, and, and we can make this our last question. Um, not just with the beagles, but any of the dogs, have any been able to be trained for a service dog? So, I'm going to say this right out loud right here. <laughs> These are not going to be service dogs. Ever. Not ever. Um, service dogs literally start their training pre-birth. So if you're looking at a true service animal, there are specialty groups that do that. They are specially picked moms, dads. Those mom and dads could have 10 puppies and maybe only four of them make it through the program, you know, even with all that caution. So a service dog is a specialty thing. It is a specialty training. That is not something that's done in a shelter. That is something where you have to, you know, if you're blind, you would, you know, contact the League for the Blind or somebody like that and they would refer you to an agency to help you find a service animal. But I think they would make great emotional support dogs.